So welcome back. Uh, this video is to show how you create a floor joist layout. I've created a, um, a set of, of wall frames here and I've also created a bit of a layout for uh, some floor joists uh, which contains of the, the perimeter where, where I want the floor joist to be but it also have an opening for where we're gonna have a staircase. So we're gonna start these um, by looking at some settings. But I first wanna highlight that this building has some walls, the red walls that are load bearing walls. And we also got some, some um, internal walls that are non load bearing. So if we're looking at them, we can quickly see that the low bearing walls, of course, are highlighted as yellow. They are about 50 mil lower because we don't want the, the floor joists or trusses to, to put any pressure on them. Um, we're going to start here by looking at the settings. And to get to the settings for floor joists, we're running the J set command. So J S A S A T. And then we can say that if we focus on the joist type side bearer, end bearer, and internal bearer type, you can see that I have applied a material to three of them, not to the fourth one. And you can look at these a little bit of a, a switch. Um, like on and off. If you apply a material, the system will insert these element. If you don't, like in this case for internal bearer, it won't insert the element. So it's not only to select your material, it also is to advise the system if you want to use that element or not. Then we got the member height. So this is different everywhere, but so, so just just in Australia alone, like in New South Wales, it's very common that architect is using a 300 uh, height for floor joists, while you will find in Victoria it's pretty common with 400, South Australia is pretty common with 4, 425, and so on. So this is whatever you need to make your floor joists at. I'm going to use the 300 as uh, this is pretty common where I am, which is in New South Wales. Um, then you got the yoy spacing. These, um, there's a different drivers of the yoy spacing. One thing could be that my structure integrity isn't enough. I'm going to have to tighten these up to be able to do, to handle the span of the floor joist. But it also is uh, driven by the floorboards so for example it's very common with a 450 spacing due to that many floorboards are requiring a fixing at every 450 millimeters so for example here in in australia 450 uh, is common when you're using for example uh, yellow tongue which is a shipboard uh, which requires a 450 spacing um, then we got the reduced level and reduced level on a uh, floor joist actually is a little bit different to most other elements. I'm just going to draw these on the screen a little bit here. So you're thinking of your floor, your, your wall frame on your your first floor or your ground floor. Um, reduced level would be at the bottom. Okay. And then we got, let's say we got a 24 height. 24 high uh, wall and then you get your floor joist in this case 300 and then you get another level of uh, wall frames and on top of that you will get some trusses so the reduced level on your trusses in this case will be there your reduced level on your upper wall frames will be there with floor joist, so you see on all this element, sorry, you will see that it's the bottom of the element that drives um, 
what height your reduced level is, the RL value that you will commonly find on all your architectural drawings. But on floor joists, it actually is the top of them. So if we got 2400 uh, high walls, you will have to add the height of the floor joists as well. So in this case, we're going to use 300 floor joists, which makes it 2700. Um, so just a, a reminder there that for floor joists, reduced levels are on top of the floor joists. So that's what we have here, and that's fine. So I'm going to continue from this, but just want to highlight one thing, and that's the bearers. So end bearers, I would say. If you're looking at these, you see that on bearers, we got four different options. I'm going to use bearers in line, but I will also continue to another page to tell you why I'm using that and what the other options are doing. Let's go to this page here, which shows the different bearers. So in this case, we got something called bearers under, which means you got your floor joist and your end bearers or the E joist uh, underneath creates a very high profile. It's not going to be easy to, to um, get your architect to agree to this. Could work well when you got garages and things to to but it's the bearer sits underneath your floor joist we got another option which i would say is the second most common option it means that you have your floor joist running all the way to the outside of your external walls sitting on top of your your top light on your wall frames which is of course very good because there's no problems to transfer the loads from your floor jo floor joist down to your wall frames the issue is that these blockings which are small square pieces um, when you install these is sometimes you will find that it it's hard because it increases over the install so it is it is a method that is is commonly used but the challenge is, is that the installers will find that these will, will, will swell when you install them. Um, we've got the, the, the third option here, which is the same as the, the, the blocking that we just looked at, but it's on just every second, which means you got two floor joists that doesn't have any prevention from falling that way, except for that it actually is attached to, to this blocking here. And then we go to the most common used word, um, method, which is the bearers in line, which means that you're running uh, an end bearer the whole way of the building. Of course, you can you can cut it up, but it's the whole way. It sits on top of the wall, and then you're just putting your floor joists in between here. The negative thing with this is that these floor joists doesn't sit on top of your wall frame but if you're using any of the pretty or the newer equipment of framecad you can always use an option which where you can extend a little bit of a tab out here so it means when you're installing these and when you manufacture these, if, you, if you're not doing it this way today, I think you should help your installer with this. Uh, when you manufacture your floor joist, you just put a little bit of a tab here so you can hang, pretty much you can hang the joist on top of these end bearers that can be pushed into position. And as soon as they are in the position where, where the installer is happy, you then attach your brackets so it's a very good way and it's actually the most popular way of doing floor joists um, currently if we now go back here we uh, we have done the settings and we now want to create this floor joist and um, we're gonna have to tell the system where we got support if you have um, a simple structure like this I can just tell the system to convert these lines to to a support line to get the engineering right um, 
if I have a, a more advanced structure, I can copy the support lines. And I will actually show you these later in this session, how you actually copy support lines. But in this case, I'm just going to create support lines by running the SL command. And I will select these as my support lines. I will at this stage create another rectangle here, uh, just to use the option of creating a a floor joist block i don't want to do individual uh, floor joists i want the system to just fill up an area of um with with, with floor joist now i'm going to use the command uh, jd which is joist uh, i say joist design because i like to find uh, words that matches the, the command but it's actually called floor layout so jd for joist command I select the perimeter where I want the of the area where I want to fill up with floor joists. I also select these these square here because this is what I want the system to make a hole, a, a, a penetration, a hole for for my staircase. And then I select enter, and then it asks me to tell where do you want to start this joist layout. I want to start it in a corner here. And then it also asks me in what direction do my floor or do our floor joists span? And of course I could select this this direction, but it's not that wise because you want floor joists to span as short as possible. So I'm gonna take the short direction. I don't wanna pick a corner or a midline, I just wanna pick the line in the direction of where I want the floor joists to run. I've done so and the system have created a, a floor joist layout for me and um, just so you know <clears throat> I have deliberately made a little bit of a um, an issue here I've, I've created something that I know will be a problem and we will get to that so I'm just gonna run the JJD command to engineer and build my my floor joist and we can now see that um, this one failed and this one which we got 31 of if i take the two the one that i have two of here that have failed and i click locate it will show me exactly where those floor joists are so it's a good way of figuring out where where is this floor jo floor joist and why did it fail um but i i'm looking at this one and i can i can of course go into the engineering and i can see why ho ho they're all red you look at the lines here they're all red it means both the top cord and the bottom cord of these are failing i got support there and i got support there but what i'm going to focus on at the moment is the actual span of these and i know that floor joist uh with a height of 300 will never be able to spend more than 6,500 millimeters. If I do them higher, yes, but not not with 300 millimeters high floor joist that will never um, perform better than, than 6,500. I could, I, I could increase the material thickness. This is 0.95, but it's still going to be a problem. So you remember I said I have deliberately made something bad. Uh, we can look at these and we understand that we're going to need some more support here so we cancel out of these and we then have a look at the layout and we can see hey there is there is actually walls in here that we have made non-low bearing looking at these walls we got the, the yellow non-low bearings they're a bit shorter yes um, there's a bit of work to to change the settings um but let's go back and do that so to make this a lot easier for me i will try to inherit the properties or copy the properties from the load bearing walls on the outside and to do so i run the command ip and again <laughs> I, I try to create names for myself that reflects what the command is so the command is ip so i say inherit properties so i want to inherit the properties from these low bearing walls and i will then select all the other walls um 
where I want these two to be the same and I will right click and then you can see that the labels disappeared and the reason the labels disappeared is because they had an N label N for non low bearing if I run the LA command again it will now relabel all my walls and and um, we now have a low bearing walls but our floor joist layer doesn't reflect this it doesn't have this support uh, somewhere around here uh, for our floor joist so I'm now going to tell the system to to create this support so I again are creating my own names to to reflect the command so I use the command copy support line or create support CSL copy support line enter I select those walls that I want to want to use to create this support line I right click and then I just click once inside the other drawing and we have we have now told the, the system and for the engineering purpose that we have support here so the span is is a lot less than than what it was before so we're going to re-engineer these joists by running the jjd command and now they actually all passed okay so the one we had issues with before is now down to 81 percent of its capacity you can also see it has inserted a vertical and it actually has that support line there so i select all and i send them to the cad of course you should have cut this member there's no truck in the world that can uh ship this 1600 long um floor joist so i'll do that i'll go in here and let's just make something up i want to have no more i want to have a 7000 here so 7000 like that i do a line here then do just member cut i say that i want to cut this member at that place and i want to cut this member there when it comes to floor joist you remember when i worked with the walls and i cut them and i did things the labels disappeared floor joist actually works automatically as soon as you cut things it will redo the labels let's just quickly talk about the different types of floor joists that we are looking at so as you can see they have different names so s j e j b and so on so j is simply a floor joist that is a structurally structural component that is carrying something you got an end bearer which is sitting on top of a of a support line meaning it's sitting on top of a wall is not structural okay we got the side bearers s not structural not carrying anything and then we got the jb and the the thing with jb is that they are actually a joist carrying another joist so they got a lot more um load on them so these this jb1 here is actually carrying that jb1 and that jb1 and so on so a blue one is a joist bearer carrying other things then we can look at these side bearers here so this is sometimes where you have to reprogram things so we got the side bearers here and the reason they're called side bearers is because they was next to the square that we have here we understand that these joists here actually carry even if it's minimal in this case because of this layout there's still a joist carrying a, a load so i would just run the ip inherit properties select another joist and i would select this here and i would make them a floor joist And then I run the LA command, and you can see that this is all now sorted. We're now looking at the 3D of this. We can see that 
this is all good or is it doesn't look good to me um we got a few here that is not good this one is not that's not this is because we've changed them since we engineered them and it actually the same thing applies to these these walls here because we uploaded these walls to 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 low bearing walls so i'll go back to the layout and i'll run the jjd command this one failed hmm okay so we now got a joist beam that have failed so we're gonna have to locate this one both of them actually failed okay what can we do about that it's it's very close but they still failed they, they can't handle that load so that takes us back to why you have a floor joist in most situations, the floor joist is the, of course, to to um, carry a load, but it's also the to so you are able to screw your um, your floorboard to it. So if you remember that we set we said it was four fifty. So you see that's four fifty, four fifty. That's the requirement from from the floorboard. Okay. So what we can do in this case is that we could actually, I'm going to make a line here and I'll make another line here like that. Then I'm going to delete these, these floor joists here. I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to move these floor joists from here to there why am i doing that yeah i do that because that means i reduce the amount of square meter that this floor joist is carrying i'm not sure yet that this will help but i hope so and then i will copy this one from here to there just to make sure that I have something to fix my board to. You remember this line is the 450 line. I'll do the same thing here. I'll copy this one from here to to here. And uh, now I'm going to use something called member extend. And member extend sounds like it's a command that only extends members. It's not. I will use the command as member extend adjusted to the size of another member or member adjusted in 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 relation to another member so i run the me command and i'm saying that this member is the driver of the length so me this one and i want this and this to adjust to that member i'll do the same thing with this one i want this and this to adjust to that member so what we have done now is that we have just swapped out so this one is now of course a little bit longer than the original one but is now the the member that continues here and we have inserted these because we're now gonna have to take a look at this again uh the fixing of floorboard we said has to happen every 450 and look at this works perfectly but we have reduced the square area which these members are carrying so let's run the jjd command again now even the joist beam has passed That was a that was a good outcome. Okay. So if we now also we had some issues with the with the walls as well. So I'm just gonna rerun the PPD command, make sure they all work well.
some reason this hasn't been engineered so I'm gonna do that And now it's all sorted so we managed to we had struggled with the the, the strength of um, the floor joists that went in between and we then um, changed the wall frames to make these um, low bearing walls we then had issues that these joist beams couldn't carry all load so what we did is that we tighten up here so that these joist beams were carrying a lot less um, we inserted these joists because we still wanted to have the exact 450 distance in between here so i made this situation because i knew it would fail and i knew it would create a lot of problems but sometimes you're up for these so this is the the tools you have to resolve things like this um, looking forward to see you in next session